He needs to test us to see just how much he can use us. Any car that you're going to drive, wouldn't you hope that has been tested? Wouldn't you hope that the brakes have been tested? Wouldn't you hope that the body is durable? Wouldn't you hope that the speedometer is working right? You would hope all those things. And so they take brand new cars that have not even hit the pavement yet, and they take these cars, and a good manufacturer will test drive the car, and not only test drive the car, they will test crash the car. They will run that car into a wall with a lot of force. And when the test is over, it looks like the car is totaled. It looks like the car is crashed up, banged up, no more good for use. But there's something that has been learned from that crash course. So now they can take the car back and they can tweak it. They can take it back and say, you can't use this kind of metal. We got to use this kind of metal. This fender will not work on this size car. We could t- they could take it back and say, we need to put a bigger engine. We need to put a smaller engine. We need to do what we need to do so that when the impact comes against you, when the impact of the crash comes against you that you've already been tested and it won't take you totally out it may bang you up a little bit but it won't take you totally out it won't take you totally out there's a recovery process and guess what we serve the greatest manufacturer on the planet if he can make you he can surely repair you He surely can fix you up. He surely can tweak those things in your life. Glory to God. That will cause you to be returned. I don't know about you, but I do not want to be a part of the recall. I don't want them to call me back and say he's no good. We can't use him. He cannot stand the test. He doesn't go fast enough. I don't want God to have to recall me. If you're going to hear the call the first time, we may as well just go. But I don't want him to have to recall me. And the devil is seeking to crash some of us up. He's seeking to bash us up. Bang us up. And make us feel like we're not fit. To hit the road. Just show up. And take the test. The test. The test is going to be something that proves that you're ready for elevation. It's going to be the thing that proves that you've learned what you need to learn in order to go to the next level. It's going to be the thing that proves and evaluates. Have you really got what I've been saying to you. And it says, let your patience have its perfect work. That you, your, your patience, your patience. And it sounds like, really here in the context of this scripture, patience can be interchanged with the word endurance and perseverance. So, are you able to endure? Are you able to persevere? The ability to tenaciously, tenacious means with a never give up attitude, take the pressure of the test that he's about to give you, that you're currently going through. We're all currently going through a test. But do we have the patience, the endurance, the perseverance to stay in the test. Perfect. Let it have its perfect work. This does not mean sinless perfection. But it does mean spiritual maturity. So God is not even requiring you to be perfect because he knows you ain't got it like that. Not yet, anyway. We ain't got it like that. 
but he needs to see your spiritual maturity. And when he talks about your spiritual maturity, the thing that drives you to a deeper relationship and communion and trust in the God that we say we serve. And so we all have a test. And your test is going to show up in so many shapes and so many forms. It's going to show up physically in your body sometimes. Sometimes it's going to show up emotionally in your mind. Sometimes your test is going to show up in how you're thinking, your mentality, and how you're walking. And sometimes it's going to show up spiritually. I just don't feel saved today. I don't know what's going on with me. I'm just mad with everybody. I'm just going through. I'm just, I don't want to hear nothing. Don't tell me nothing. I, look, you don't know what I'm going through. Sometimes your test is going to show up. And guess what? The source of the test may just surprise you. The source of the test may come from your family. It may come from your friends. It may come from your colleagues. God knows it may come from your co-workers. It may come from just the fact that when you reach in your pocket, you ain't got the money that you want to have to do the things you would like to do. And guess what, saints? I'm going to say this one real quiet. But I did say we were going to be real, right? Your test may come right here in the church. Before we get to... God be with you. Your test may show up. You your name may not make it to the benediction. Your test may show up. Your test may sit beside you. Your test may sing with you. Your test may work on the same committee with you. Your test may be there. So it's going to show up. The test is going to show up. But guess what? When we were in school, sometimes when it was time to take that citywide test, God knows I was intimidated. I didn't know if I had retained all the information. I didn't know if I could remember all the formulas to take the algebra region. I didn't know if I was going to be able to remember everything from September all the way up to now we're taking the test in May. So I didn't know, and sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating. And you get to the test, and guess what? We going through tests, we going through trials, and life is trying to beat us down. But guess what? Everybody who's under the sound of my voice right now just took step one. You showed up. The enemy said, with all that's going on with you, why don't you just stay home? They ain't going to miss you today. What you going to get all dressed up for? Why are you going to put on your Sunday go to meeting clothes? Why are you going to get your hair done and put on your nice tie and put on your gaiters and you going in there and you know you're not happy? What you going in there for? It, it, just stay on home and, you know, watch some TV, eat some bonbons. You know, I mean, ain't nobody looking, take a little... You know, this is what the enemy will start to speak to your mind. But how many of you know you just showed up? You showed up for the test today. And so that's step one. You just got to show up and take the test. And at the end of this, I'm going to show you how God's going to work this out for us. You're going to just have to show up and take the test. Just come on into the test. And on the day of the test, those big tests, they tell you to show up. And what they tell you to bring with you? A number two pencil. Am I right or wrong? Hallelujah. Well, guess what? A number two pencil ain't going to help me on this one. I need a number three pencil. I need a number three pencil because you know what? I need God the Father, the one that's going to help me take me through this test. I need Jesus, the one that paid the way so that I can take this test. And I, God knows I need the Holy Ghost, the thing that's going to guide me and shield me and tell me which way to go. I need a number three pencil for this one. Because the number two is just not going to work out. I need a number three. And then when you get there, you look at the grid. And the grid got all those little circles on it. And it's empty. And guess what? It looks a little intimidating. Because the first thing you do is look at the bottom to see how many questions is on the test. It's 72. And I only got an hour. How am I going to do this? 
you look a little, you, you feel a little intimidated because all the questions are there and you, you don't even